I'm Nathan Cartwright, the King Bee of the Hive. I've been putting this together for a while now, and uh, we're going to get to know each other really well if we haven't met at this point. My role here is to curate art, to create a creative environment for, for people to express themselves and um, to make things happen in downtown LA. And, uh, the Hive is at the core of it, bringing art and and the right kind of clientele and the right kind of people to downtown. We're bringing people here, artists here, and we're making art, we're inspiring each other, we're building off each other's ideas, and, um, and I'm the, I guess, artist turned businessman. You know, for the last two years, it's been evolving. You know, it started out just a big group show with performances. Now it's a group show with five artists that are featured, an installation area, um, a store. Um, so all that has been a gradual evolution over the last two years. Now this is a whole quantum jump because I believe video is the modern media of the masses. So join us. We're gonna we're gonna meet all the featured artists. We're going to meet the Dream a Little Dream artists, the group show artists that have put together pieces specifically for this month. We're gonna see it from my point of view. We're gonna walk around and check out every little aspect of, of what has gone in to put on a large group show and featured artist show. So this is, this is next level. This is the royal jelly. The royal jelly is the cream of the crop. piece I submitted for the Dream a Little Dream theme show is a spaceship uh, piece. Um, one of the reoccurring dreams that I have uh, is a uh, flying dream, right? The most cliche of dreams, but I seem to have that dream a lot. Um, but the interesting thing about the flying dream is I'm sort of out of touch from everybody around me and um, I can just take off and land whenever I want. And so there's this real sense of strength and freedom, you know, that other people don't you know, I'm just sort of like a way out of touch from, from like negative energy and what other things are going on, on on Earth. But the thing that's interesting about the dream to me is I get so far up in the air from these flying dreams that it begins to get cold and black. And then I start to wonder in my dream, you know, like how far can I fly up away from like reality and from uh, the norm, I guess. So, you know, in my mind, I'm like analyzing these dreams, you know, every time I have one. But it's interesting that there's sort of this paradox with the dream that the flying has this sense of freedom and um, uh, strength to it. But, uh, you know, if I get too far out there, could I, could I like lose reality? We like lose control, I think is the big, a big thing for artists. I think a lot of artists are really afraid of losing control. And for me, that's what the flying dream is about. <laughs> The recurring dream that I have all the time is me falling down in this endless pit. I don't know why it's an endless pit out of all the dreams, but it's an endless pit. And so I keep falling and falling, and as I'm falling, I'll see like these crazy creatures. And as I see these creatures, they kind of they kind of scare me, but they don't, because as as I get further down the hole. I keep on seeing them so it doesn't quite, you know, get as scary later on. So I guess, in a way, it helped me getting scared as a young kid and having these recurring dreams. And if you see it, some of my art now, it's these, like these weird monsters, these fat guys with no arms, and these killer bushes that attack people. And like, um, everything lives in a forest, so it's like this weird, nature forest where plants and just everything lives and comes alive and so I guess having this recurring nightmare helped me establish my artwork. In general my dreams are always kind of free-flowing you know it's never like I just dream about one event and it happens for the whole night that I dream it's more like I'll start dreaming about you know being on a spaceship and then I see a TV and I go into the TV and I whatever that was about and, you know it's like, so then there'll be dinosaurs, and then after that I'm, you know, in math class or, you know, any number of millions of things, but it's always in transition and nothing, even like my own, my own like person won't even stay constant throughout anything. And that was actually the biggest thing about the painting that I did for this show was to try to get that feeling where if you scan it from left to right, the story that it's telling changes like inch by inch. 
and then I just pulled things that I could remember from my dreams or just from daydreams and stuff that I have all the time and just kind of like forced all that together into something that I hope is neat to look at. Featured artist one was Renee Lotter. She's been showing with me for a long time and uh, has a great, great world and a great story that she's creating. It generally involves cuddly, large characters devouring smaller, more cuddly characters. It really appeals to our people here. Hi, I'm uh, Renee Lauder. I've been painting for, I don't know, my whole life, really. And I'm a mere 22 years old. Yeah. <laughs> I guess a lot of my pieces are, even though they seem to have like this kind of light, fluffy substance to them, they're really a little bit kind of dark. It's called Cupcaketopia, and it's this whole world that you kind of enter, and it's got all these creatures and these things that happen there. This is, this is a, a, an ongoing story, and the story is my life. As I move and change through life, so does my work, and so does the subjects of my work. And I think I'm kind of in this, like, fluffy kind of place right now. I just got married in September. It's weird because I started playing around with papyrus paper. I did a little bit of reading about um, a lot of sort of Japanese painters and Hokusai was one that kind of came to mind. And I bought this big book of his that I sort of kept, you know, staring at the pages and staring at like how weird some of that stuff is and like what they paint and then, you know, how they meditate on paintings. And I just, I don't know, I just like the idea of painting on papyrus and sort of leaving some stuff a little bit open. I was sort of trying to figure out, because I mean, I know the vibe of the hive is like very, you know, active and everybody's moving around. I'm like, okay, so I could, I could put a table out and I could put this big platter out, but I could see the disaster of cupcakes everywhere on the floor in here. So I thought, my slut, slut. <laughs> my cupcake slut. So, and I wanted her to be kind of sinister looking where I kind of had the 50s housewife look to the way that I actually dress. Why? cupcakes. I think maybe it stuck inside my mind and I sort of just wound up wanting to paint cupcakes. The process of the cupcakes went a little bit like this. Oh yeah, yeah, I got all these cupcakes. I'm baking all these cupcakes. I'll put the cupcakes all over the shelves. And then I'm thinking, yeah, a month down at the hive in the sweaty heat, uh, that's not going to work. I stood around looking at stuff and I was like, oh my god, plaster! And then I just started like mixing the plaster. I got home one night and I knocked out all these cupcakes as far as like uh, casting them. The tops on the cupcakes were kind of a bitch because I had to mix it thicker so it was hardening in the, in the cake gun. You're pouring the stuff out like trying to get the perfect like tight, you know, ringlet. And as I would squeeze it, it would blow up like blow the icing off the cupcake and it'd all be stuck in my hair and stuff. It sucked, it sucked for a while there. I, there was some, yeah, not so nice words coming out of my mouth, but. And then I used real sprinkles and then shellac the shit out of them. It's funny that people would gravitate towards a particular one. I was just sort of like, some looked like poop, other ones looked like weird poop. <laughs> it all kind of looks like pink poop to me, I don't know, it's kind of fun. 